We've also continued our discussions with Beijing Automotive. Some of you might remember that we signed an agreement uh, with them uh, where we sold some older technology. Um, and we're now exploring that further to see how we can cooperate with, with uh, Beijing Automotive as it relates to the very important Chinese market. And we see uh, tremendous possibilities for us to grow in, in China, which is, as you know, a market that is, that is really booming at this point. So a lot of activities and then of course also just the day-to-day -day stuff to make sure that we can operate as a standalone company. And this is what, where we have devoted our time over the, the last uh, couple of months, I would say. If you look into the future though, uh, what is the content of our business plan going forward? Well, first of all, funding is a critical issue. I mentioned the, uh, the loan from the European Investment Bank, and uh, in uh, addition to that, the transaction with Beijing Automotive brought in about $200 million US dollars to the company, and uh, through the cooperation with GM, we have an additional four to five hundred million dollars of funding. So we now are looking at a fully funded business plan that will ensure uh, the future future of the SAAP brand. If we then look at the uh, business plan more operationally, I would say there are three key cornerstones in the plan. Uh, one is of course the operational side of the business, our brand, and last but not least, the product side. On the operational side, we are creating an independent organization where we will have our full focus in Trollhättan, Sweden. That's where we locate all the development work, we'll locate all the manufacturing work except the 94X, the crossover vehicle that will be built in Mexico because of various reasons. And we will locate also in Trollhättan all other activities, sales and marketing, other staff functions, etc. So Trollhättan will really be the hub uh, for the soft business going forward. As it relates to the distribution side, the sales and marketing, uh, we had uh, 23 countries where General Motors was actually responsible for the sales of, of soft cars. And uh, what we have to do is get out of those in every, those mar every of those markets. In the US, we have set up our own subsidiary, the same in the UK as an example. And in other markets, we're operating through our own branch offices, uh, independent importers, and other solutions. And that's, of course, also what we're exploring for the Canadian market. Uh, Canada is a very important market for Saab. We had, uh, over the last five or six years, a good run in terms of gradually growing our business here until, I would say, the late part of 2008 when, when the difficulties started for General Motors. And, we're of course looking at, as quickly as we possibly can, get back into the same shape that we had before in continuing to grow uh, the market, uh, the Canadian market for so. Uh, Brand-wise, uh, I would dare to say that one of the key reasons why Saab is still around is because of the strength of the brand. This unique brand that is built on a tremendous heritage of innovation, uh, the air, uh, aircraft heritage, the Swedishness of the brand that actually develops products that are very unique in its characteristics and its design. Uh, a driver's car as well as a plan. Uh, we will deliver on these on these promises. Of course, we have a wish list. We have lots of stuff that we would like to do. And of course, a car below the 9.3 is, uh, it could be a, a great opportunity for us. And we haven't got it funded in the business plan yet, but I can assure you, we're at it, and we hope that we're going to be able to bring it into the portfolio very, very quickly. Highest priority, though, for Saab during this period is to show a black numbers, to generate a good return on the business. Um, I would say that the day that we can show black numbers will be as important as launching a brand new car. And we're at it at this point, and the key strategy is to bring the break-even point down in the company by dimensioning our operation properly. 
Uh, and that means that going from maybe a break even point of just over 100,000 units, we will bring it down to 80, 85,000, which means that our target volume of 120, 125,000 units worldwide will have a good business return. This is critical for the company going forward. Last but not least, you might ask, how is this going to work? Everybody talks in the auto industry about volume, how economies of scale, how important that is, and how can this little uh, manufacturer Saab with 120,000 units actually survive in the, the very competitive auto, auto industry. But I would say that if you look at our past experience, having been a part of General Motors, and you go through the, uh, the uh, factory that we have, state of the art. said that um, I would like to, to now introduce to you the, uh, the uh, CEO of Spiker Cars, Victor Miller, who is uh, also the chairman of Saab, Saab Automobile. Um, Victor and I met in uh, the end of November for the first time in Detroit. And uh, I would say have been since that time working like uh, twins almost, uh, spending a lot of time together. Um, and uh, I must say that uh, getting Victor into uh, to this business has been a, a very, very pleasant experience. His entrepreneurship has been. And uh, I'd like to turn it over now to Victor to give you his perspective. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, it's truly an honor and a pleasure to be here today. Uh, let there be no misunderstanding. Without Jan Arthur Johnson, there would be no SAP today. This man stood behind his company and his management and his uh, employees like no one else before. And uh, his perseverance, his tenacity to, uh, to see it through, in spite of all the adversities that came his way, uh, are just so remarkable. And, uh, and we're very grateful. Thank you very much. Jan. As John Arcus said, we have to look forward. And uh, it's uh, very tempting to go into the past and talk about how it came to be and uh, why, why it actually worked. Uh, I'll be very brief about it. Uh, Spiker got into the game on the 25th of November when it turned out that the Phoenix had had gone through. And we were not in the race for SAP earlier because we were looking at another acquisition. We were in the process of acquiring uh, Braun GP, the Formula One team, which became world champion last year. Would have been a great deal, but fortunately, actually in hindsight, that deal didn't materialize. So we had our hands free by the end of October, and we were actually on the lookout for another opportunity to grow our business.